Hey, business builders. Um, I'm joined today by Bryn Tillman. Many of you, that's great. The, the wave, uh, many of you have heard me talk about Bryn or I've shared uh, some of her article, articles with you. Uh, Bryn, you've been my go-to person to show people how to write their profile so that it's something that people can take, you know, you know can dive deeper into and understand how uh, we serve and who we really are and want to click and go deeper and learn more about us. So you're my person. And so it's great to have you here today. Bryn is local. She's in Philadelphia. So we've actually had a chance to meet, which is always a bonus. And Bryn is the founder of Social Sales Link. You can see the logo in the back. Uh, very nice. On a, on a brick, on a brick wall. Shows up well. And Oh, it's moving. That's great. Yeah, one of those. And and so, hey, Brent, it's great to have you today. We're going to do, what I want to do is kind of showcase your work and and it'll, the way we'll dive into some LinkedIn profiles. Uh, I have mine pulled up. I have a couple of clients pulled up. I have yours pulled up. I'd like to share the screen and just kind of let you do your thing and show how you do your work. And then we'll uh, do a little bit of uh, sharing of the the new site you have with the training modules and the tools and the resources that are free so people can find their way there and get your help, right? Does that sound good? Fabulous. I love it. I'm so happy to be here, Wayne, and it's great to see you again. Yeah, likewise. Um, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the screen share up here. Great. And, and we'll dive in. The more tactical, the happier I am. Okay, great. Um, well, can you, you know, I probably should say, why don't you just tell us a little bit about Social Sales Link and what you do there? And Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's more fun to do the work, but um, I, I am the CEO of Social Sales Link. Uh, we help anyone that's looking to grow their business leverage LinkedIn to start more sales conversations. It's really about how do you genuinely take how you are in the real life? So you treating people on the other side of the message the same way you would if they were on the other side of the table. And a lot of people are like, I'm really good in person, but I am challenged on building those relationships on LinkedIn. And that's what we help you do. Yeah, you're, you know, I put your website up here and it's, that's Thanks. so clear, the idea that we're, we're just, we're going to get to conversations. I was just listening to um, Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson last night. And he was talking about how he had gone down a kind of a bad path with social um, media and, and was trying to sell his products. And somebody brought him to this realization that that's not really what social network it's, is for. It's to network, it's to talk to people, it's to create conversations. And then when they find their way back to our our home or our house, like your website here, social sales link, maybe they will want to engage with us and they will want to we hopefully buy something like buying things is good. And we like making money and that's how we ultimately serve people to our maximum capacity. Right. But it starts with conversations. That's what we're looking for. Absolutely. And you know, if you're going to grow your business, unless you sell a widget, you've got to have conversations. So you know, starting with the mindset of earning the right to have that conversation um, is, is vital. One thing that uh, we run into all the time is, you know, whether it's an entrepreneur, a business owner, or a sales professional, they're often saying, you know, I don't know if I could just get them on a 15 minute call. I don't know why they won't take my call. I have so much value to bring, but they don't know that yet. You haven't earned the right to do that. So a huge piece of getting those converting connections to conversations is earning the right to do that. And it's really important to understand that it's not given. Like if you're in a, a, a networking meeting and you walk up to someone, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to start a conversation with you. But it's different here on LinkedIn because there are so many people that are abusing it, right? Like we are on a daily basis getting hit with, you know, six, seven, 10 pitches, right? And it feels so icky. Yeah. And so we have to make sure that if we really want to get conversations, we've got to do a lot to earn that right. And so uh, that does start with having a profile that's positioned 
to convert those connections to conversations. Great, great transition. So let's take a look at, um, I, I have your profile pulled up yeah. and you know, I was thinking maybe you just kind of walk us through how do you do that? What is, what is the way that you position your profile to yeah. make it inviting? So so, on and so, forth. so I love it. So let's just start with what you see here. This is the top of the fold. It's very much like, you know, that traditional newspaper when you walk into a 7-Eleven or here in the local area, it would be a Wawa. But if you walk into a 7-Eleven, you see all of the newspapers, right? And they're all fighting for you to buy them, to pick them up and read them. So they spend an enormous amount of time and energy on a daily basis building that top of the fold so that you grab that paper so that it attracts you. Well, the goal here is when they land here, which is one of many profiles they land on, that they decide, I want to read this one. I'm willing to invest the next three minutes to check this one out. So there are a few things that we want to keep in mind. Number one, You've got this banner. Now, this is a very generic banner for me, but uh, you know, I this is like a billboard. I'm often switching them out. If I have an upcoming event, it would be here. So um, I, I, we are currently filming our e-learning, so I didn't want to date myself or say what it was. So I have a very generic banner here, but it, it at least some interest, and it'll draw you in immediately. You know that I'm, I'm relating to that. The next thing is the headshot. This is a 24 seven networking meeting, treat it that way. Show up as you would if you were showing up in person. Uh, get that professional headshot done. Often I say, you know, especially in today, if you did get a really good headshot with your iPhone, it's fine. But I really believe in investing in a professional photo shoot if you can. For lots of reasons beyond this content, do you, if you do like a lifestyle photo shoot almost, you can reuse your images and it's very good for branding. We can talk about that later. Um, one of the things that you might notice that's relatively new is there's a speaker next to where it says first oh, that. connection, right? Yeah. So this, I love this new feature. The feature is designed because we are global in networking for name pronunciation. However, LinkedIn gives you 10 seconds and to pronounce Bryn Tillman is a way less than 10 seconds. So I use this as my 10 second commercial. So I don't know if you want to play it, if it'll come through, or you just click on the speaker, it should play. It, it will if, I think oh, I you, tell you it. may have to have, like click computer sound on Zoom. We don't have to do it now. Right you know what, go visit my profile and click and you get to hear it. Now, the yeah. thing about this is, is you can only record this on mobile right now. Okay. Oh, so you have the mobile app on your phone, you record it. You then... record, yeah, but it plays it. everywhere. Sure. The next area is your headline, just like that newspaper. This headline has a big job and this headline's job is to get you interested in, in, in to continue to scroll, right? Like, okay, You've caught my attention. Now I'm going to back up for a minute and I'll come back to this. There are five points to getting engagement on LinkedIn or, or, I mean, it may relate. I only do LinkedIn. It may even relate to business period, um, marketing sales period. Right. But the first one is that your buyer or your audience or your visitor has to resonate with this story, mm. right? They have to connect. The next thing is you have to create some level of curiosity in order for them to continue. There's so much noise that if we can't peak curiosity, they're gone fast. Number three, and this is only for business development. This doesn't have to be for brand development, but this is like if you are in a sales role or business development, we have to make sure we're teaching them something new. Corporate Visions did a study that found that 74% of buyers choose the sales rep that was first to provide value and insight. Value and insight is a, a, a little mini education. They will consider you as a vendor if they believe you can bring value. And 
earning the right starts here with bringing value and teaching them something new. The fourth piece is connected to the third, which is that new thing that they just learned needs to get them thinking differently about their current situation. That's like their pivot. So you taught them something new and they go, hmm, that's interesting. I never thought of my business that way. I never thought of my challenge that way, right? So they learned it new, but they're relating it back to how can I either, maybe they learned about a gap in their business. Maybe they learned about a risk. Maybe they learned an insight that can help them do X. Maybe they got a, a moment of self-reflection, right? Whatever that is, we've resonated, created curiosity, taught them something new, and now have them going, maybe it's FOMO, fear of missing out, right? But we have them going, I like this, I want this, I'm, you know, this is this, I'm relating to this. And then if all four of those points hit, it will lead to your solution, or it should. So sometimes we get them thinking differently and it leads to the wrong solution, not yours. So you have to be careful that it all is aligned so that by the time they get to, hmm, that's interesting, I'd like to see how X works for me, your solution is X. Right. Yeah. So back to the headline, sorry, took a pivot. The headline is designed to begin that process. So the first thing is the resonate. Who do I help? So when my potential client or target audience shows up here, they know that I work with them or that they're, you know, that I'm speaking to them. So I have transforming the way professionals grow their business. Who do I work with? Professionals that want to grow their business. Now, how do I do this? This is creating a little bit of the curiosity piece. Right, so I do this in a way that they go, hmm, that's interesting, right? So, so how do I do this? By leveraging LinkedIn. And I'll actually, it's even curiosity, you know, to convert content and connections to conversations. So now they go, wow, maybe my buyer would go, I want more conversations from my content. I have a lot of connections and none of them are turning, right? So I've got this right. going. Now I haven't taught them anything yet. So it's not necessarily all in the same order, but I've got them interested to want to learn more. Now, I, and I, I take a moment here, and this is really because LinkedIn now gives us 220 characters where we used to have a lot less. So I add instructor-led training, e-learning and group coaching because I want people to know a little bit of what I do but by grabbing them in that first piece, the people that would want to work with me are curious enough to keep reading. How do you, uh, I think it would be a common question. So how, do, how would people find your profile typically? And you may like, maybe later we'll get this, but it's, let's just talk about it right now. Cause sometimes uh, social media, I hear people saying, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. Like I tried it, it doesn't really work. And yeah, you're smiling. Um, and, and by work, I, for having a good headline makes sense. Changing the banner is a thing you said. And you know, I was thinking about going to networking events. Like we don't always wear the same clothes when we go to networking events. So we might, you know, we change that. So why might we not change our banner? It's a living thing that we can use. Yeah, yeah. yeah how, do, how do people in your experience come here and find this? Yeah, so there's inbound and outbound. So there, you know, and just like in typical sales, you're going to get both. So let's talk about the outbound first. The outbound is I'm sharing content. Uh, I'm engaging on other people's content. Um, uh, you know, I post something. It's it's a random. We, we can scroll down to this step, but the, yeah, on under activity. Yeah, I felt like looking at let your activity that might tell us what. Is yeah, so activity do. is the outbound. Right, so here's all my activity. What am I doing? Um, I commented on Fred Diamond's post today. I keep scrolling down, I don't even know what I've done because I wasn't prepared for this to go public here. No, that's fine. But so, so you, I, there's probably a lot of back and forth on Fred Diamond's. 
So you'll Got see it. activity is all my activity. So if you scroll down till we, he has great stuff by the way. Yeah. So there was a lot of back and forth because it was conversation. I actually liked a post that my company posted. So I actually have a VA that does all our company posting. And then I like, I didn't even engage on that. More Fred Diamond. So this is interesting because you'll see everything I'm doing. But if you actually looked back on this, Fred Diamond has lots of people engaging on his stuff. And I'm not just engaging with Fred, but I'm engaging with all the people that are commenting on Fred's. Fred is a magnet. So me. the people you might want to help, Bryn, are following Fred or seeing Fred. Yeah. So therefore you're getting involved in the conversation, which yeah. might cause, and then what I notice here is even in the thread, I would see these first words, transforming the way professionals grow their business. Yeah. So I may want to transform the way professionals grow my business. And I may think your, your glasses are cool. And I wish I had glass for lots of reasons. I may click on that and want to follow right. back or, or go deeper and see who you are. So, so if you don't have a ton of your own content, find magnets. Magnets are people, first of all, they, they are posting because they want the engagement. They're thrilled that you're engaging. Fred now will tag me in things because I engage with his people. So he, he likes that I'm exposing him to my network, right? So magnets are people that are not your competitor, but are, are attracting your ideal buyers, engaging not just with the author, but then all the other folks. That's how we start that online. So let's go actually, I mean, this is, uh, articles are actually blogs inside of LinkedIn. I'm a little late out of my November one. I got to get to that one. Usually I do one a month. Um, posts are every post. So posts, I'll have a ton of stuff on here, right? So yesterday, this was my post. If you scroll down, so I posted this and I'll probably have some interaction. I'm not sure what I have, but if you look, hopefully I've done a good job of this, right? So there's um, 38 comments. I'm at least, and I pace myself on this. So if you see, so half of those comments are probably mine and half are somebody else's. Mm. So I try to comment on everyone that commented, um, right? So, you know, I have Meredith, who's amazing. She's a magnet, by the way, right? This is key. I have some work to do. So then I just share, you have so much value to bring, like, because this was about value that she, like, there's so much she can offer. And then Sue, who knows Meredith and me, commented to something else, right? So, so there's whole conversations that are, be, are inside of the comments. This draws in people. So if I were to look at who viewed my profile, my guess is Mark, Mike looked at it and Meredith looked at it. And, right? and so as we start to have these conversations, we draw them in. So that, although it seems like that is outbound, that is, I've done my work here, which is bringing them kind of through content. Inbound are invitations. Um, no, I did it backwards. That, that, I did it back. Inbound is I've done work here and they're showing up. I messed that up, Wayne. I got it. Well, well but you're, you're, you're taking action on other people's things, which feels like energy out. And because you're putting that energy out, then they see you and they come, then they turn into inbound and they start, they come to your profile and they took a yeah. look at who you are and may send you an, a connection request, right? Absolutely. And I, sometimes I'll send it to them, right? There's also, so outbound, inbound, all, it kind of all blends together. But the other side is, I am finding and connecting with people through my warm market. So Wayne, I noticed you're connected to a few people on LinkedIn that I'd love to get in front of. We can talk about this more later, right? And you're like, oh, you'd be great. That They would love you. Awesome. Can I mention that we had this conversation and that you think I should talk to them? Yes. Now I'm reaching on connecting. Wayne Herring and I were chatting the other day. Your name came up in our conversation. So now I'm inviting them. Visit my profile. If you think it makes sense, let's connect. Mm. Now I'm inviting them to come here because this helps me to earn the right to get that conversation. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, you mentioned something about if I take a look at who looked at my profile, uh, then there's also this element of 
people notice if we look at their profile? And that's another place where your headline and that. Yeah, you want to go to your home page. So it's called, oh, you could do it from there too. Scroll down a little bit. I'm sorry, you could do both places. Uh, yeah, I go home page. But if you scroll down, you'll see your activity under this. Yeah, you could do who's used your profile on the left hand side, 399. Not bad, not bad. Um, Learning you, from you. That's why we're doing this. Yeah, right. So we <laughs> can see. So if you look and so you have a first degree, Christina. So now you're like, oh, Christina, I've been trying to get, I would love to re-engage with Christina. It's been a long time since I spoke with her. She looked at your profile. It's like caller ID. You can return her call. Well, hey, that's Christina, creepy though, right? No, it's not. Christina. I'm only hey, telling you what I hear people say. I want to see how you handle that. Yeah. I mean, look, the people, we know already, but if it's, hey, Christina, I noticed you visited my profile, made me think it's been some time. Now, look, LinkedIn will give you a, how did she get here? You actually messaged her, found you via a message. So you, it's less creepy, right? So um, maybe she didn't respond to your message, but she got to your profile. That's interesting information, right? Um, so you see Dave found you via LinkedIn profile. That wasn't, um, oh, that's David. If we go to Dave to the one day ago, Thanks, right, we can mm -hmm. see where, sometimes where they're coming from. Um, LinkedIn, I, I'm not 100% sure LinkedIn profile that came in from a search that they looked for the greatest coaches in the world and your name came up. I sent him a message to, I, I sent him a message. It had been a while since we talked and he replied and then he must've looked at my profile. David, so, David yeah. Ostroff is in my calendar to talk to you after you and I wrap up this okay. um, conversation today. It found me, it's actually booked a call using my 20 minute call link, which is in my call profile, it. which I probably learned that from you too. So yeah, That's there's things right, yeah. anyway, it's, it's not a, but I, but I think this kind of mechanical, how do I think about LinkedIn? How do I reach out inbound, outbound, whichever we call it? Um, it's not something where I just put my profile out there, then it's passive and I wait, you know, go out and wait with my cup for the rain to fall. Right. Yeah. That, that, that myth, if you build it, they will come. It's a myth, right? It, it does, you have to invite them a few times. You have to, you know, uh, send out trailers to the party, you know, like you know, fully on invitations. You want to come see the movie. Here's why you'd want to see it, right? Like you've got to give them little test drives of you. Mm. So <clears throat> that's going to happen in content and connections. So, so I, I saw you somewhere. I clicked on your profile. I, I took you off track here, Bren. You were above the fold. And then I'm like, wow, now I'm kind of interested. I'm a professional. I want to grow LinkedIn, right? And I start, but we can imagine this is what would be happening. And you've then designed all this quite intentionally. Yeah. So I have a call to read, right? So mostly because when you get here, this is condensed and all you see is the top two lines. Um, so although I don't typically believe in all caps because I feel like I'm screaming at you, it does get you to open it. So I don't use it a lot, but I do use it here. Okay. And now so I this is the call to read is learn about. Yes. So oh, right. Keep going. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, so go. Okay. That's good. If you, if you don't care about that, it's okay. But there's not a you know that that if if you want to learn LinkedIn social selling strategies, then you know keep keep there's more you know to come right. So you it's a qualifier of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. So I start with the challenge always start with the challenge either that or a statistic right because we want so what's the challenge the buyer's journey has changed buyers are now researchers explorers self-educators and collaborative decision makers and significantly impacting the sales the traditional sales process so if you are a traditional salesperson you know things have changed i am not having the success i used to have if you're still having the success that you always had, which has been great success, you may not need this. But if this resonates with you, resonates, first one, if this resonates with you, yeah, you know, it has changed. I don't have the same luck cold calling as I used to. You keep reading, right? And so after the challenge, we move into real insights. This is where I teach you something new. 
Yeah, I want to I want to want to pause you. I'm like we have 23 minutes, so I'm just I feel a a place okay. where we could shift because I th that makes sense. Like read this. Here's here's what the challenge is and what has changed. Now you have here's three things that you can use right now. And then at the bottom, there's ways that I, if I want to go ahead and actually connect with you via telephone, you're making that easy or by email, you're making it easy. Or email or schedule call with me or whatever works best for you. I want to make it easy. So there's multiple ways. And here's, so what I was uh, hoping I could ask is here's, here's a client, here's somebody who's part of my uh, business builder group, Tom Garrity. Hi, Tom. Tom will watch this. He's now going to be a star and he's been working on his LinkedIn profile. He's looked at some of your things. He's just started this though, but Tom is a, absolutely an expert on helping family businesses to, well, just what it says there, family business growth and transition. He helps them to get to the next generation. He helps them to have an enjoyable Thanksgiving conversation where business isn't getting in the That's way That's what's missing here. Family love. Got it. Yeah, good. Right? So, yeah, so that's what I was hoping to kind helping, of do a walk through. So helping family, uh, legacy planning or whatever that looks like while maintaining, uh, you know, keep, keeping, I, I don't know exactly, but you, you hit on it. It's like, so helping businesses, business growth and transition. So, um, and it's family, always family, family owned businesses, um, grow, you know, through their growth and transition while maintaining strong, loving relationships, right? Cause that's the key. Like for, you know, if you, I'm going to hand this off to my middle son, but my oldest son he wants money from this, even though he's not working in it. And my, right. And you're like, okay, well, how do we do this while after I die, they still can have Thanksgiving dinner together. Yeah. That's what, if that's what you're selling to that needs to be here in a strong, powerful way. Right. So it's, it's helping businesses um, grow and transit, helping family owned businesses grow and transition while maintaining relationships now and into the future. So, and, and pictures of business books, favorite business books. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe uh, if there were like some family ones, some growth, which there are family ones, growth ones. I mean, if you have like, like, a, like four generations in front of a logo, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but it's not terrible. Um, but I, I like I like things that are a little more drawing in. But yeah. Um, all right. So, are you a family business owner? I don't care. Yeah. So what? Keep moving, right? But what if you start with your call to read is um, learn how to main maintain family unity as a business as a as a family business owner um five strategy three three strategies uh to keep to to grow your family owned business uh and maintain relationships. got it but it's something that, that's a call to read that says if you hit this Again, I, I was saying it's important to think somebody is sitting there like I am right now and considering, do I stop and hit see more or do I go somewhere else, right? Yeah. And, and I, yeah. So I love these you. stats. I would even do this. So only 33% of family business transaction tra transition to the second generation. So I don't know if they care. I, I, but I, I would find the one stat that scares them. Mm, got it. Or the one stat... Um, yeah, I like stats. People like stats. It's a third party verification that what you're doing is important. Um, I use stats when we talk about polls all the time. Is that so, so Tom, like, like could, could work on some of these pieces. He has been doing some videos that are helpful. Um, get, getting engagement. Here's one 47 people. These are, yeah, these are, these are a good start. Um, I like, why are you running around with your hair on fire? I love that. Our economy was booming then, bam. Like, that's good. 
that's a, that's that's creating enough curiosity so how important is the company experience then we didn't get to that on yours but yeah first tell your story then tell them how they can buy from you if they made it here they're interested enough to know what is it that you do so on mine i have my story of how i ended up where i am today that transitions right so how i started in sales and how i ended up here it's slightly amusing but we do need to connect with human beings that's basically the point of that but then i have if you like that and you're now connected here's how we could work together and i have the four or five deliverables and buy from you in this case for tom would be just to have a conversation about family business and growth and what how he well, so so right. It, it might be, so there's a couple of things he could do. You could do it by persona. Here are the kinds of people we work with or the kinds of companies. You can break it down by deliverables. So we do succession planning. We do, um, I don't know what you do, right? But we, we and so you could break it down by the, the deliverables. You could break it down by industries you serve, right? So maybe family owned businesses and maybe, I don't know if you work with, maybe that's all you work with, but if maybe you worked with three different types, got it. Um, maybe it's family owned businesses, uh, tr uh, uh, generational transition, family owned businesses that will be sold. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Like there, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the answer, but the bottom line is, you know, so that they know you can help me here. You can help me here. You can help me here. You, at this point, if they're still looking, you've earned the right for them to care about what it is you do. Okay, so a little bit farther to this is how we actually serve and how we perform miracles and things like that. Yeah. So here's so here's here's going to be a question that I think a lot of people like Tom and there's another guy Jack that I was thinking of. Maybe we'll get to him. Um, Tom is is very busy, has a full book of clients. Uh, you know is. Hey, Tom, you're not of the age where you grew up with LinkedIn. Like this is something happened later in the life. It's classic, like amazing uh, builder of connections to centers of influences and his network, like using old school, um, go to events, help people, refer people. These are things he's always done. But here's the, here's the story for, for Tom then is Tom has um, two uh, professional uh, coaches, uh, people that have joined his team. So Cheryl is one and, and Cheryl right here. Uh, so Cheryl does more of the actual helping the family businesses, but also takes them through the process of when we find out they really have a need and there's something Compass Point could help with, that's when she engages. So she's mm -hmm. not, she certainly does like quote top of funnel and connects with people, but there's somebody else in the firm uh, Cheyenne, who is doing a lot of that connecting with brand new people that they've never met. Like, how do you take a team mm -hmm. of people, plus they have a, a great marketing person, Lori Blatt, who helps run their company LinkedIn page. Mm -hmm. like, like that strategy of how do you get four people using LinkedIn, because clearly the people they serve are there, but in a productive way where I'm not mm -hmm. sitting and feeling attached to my phone all day and going down the rabbit hole of consuming too much social media as opposed to selling. How do you work with a four to, to like to structure that or put a strategy around what we do together? Right? Yeah. So I love that. So there are a lot of collaborative things. Um, the, the sales navigator tool, I know you have sales navigator, but the sales navigator tool, if you have that in an organization, um, there's a lot of collaborative tools to, to actually work on people and companies together. So uh, not to get too deep into that, but um, from the marketing, if you are sharing content, make sure you're pushing that out to the team to share whether you're notifying employees or you're mentioning them so that you have one place of a lot of engagement versus here's a link, go share it and five people or four people are sharing one link, each of them get one or two engagements. Instead, get the 10 engagements on the one piece and then that will stay top. So, so the article gets posted in the company from the company, but then the individual people share it, which will route everything back to the back original. To the they yeah. wouldn't all share it individually is what you're Correct. saying. Okay. That's the very first thing to do with content. 
Um, you're much better having one piece of content get 10 in pieces of you know, like reactions or comments than five pieces getting two each, right? Like th there's a there is significantly difference in, different in um, algorithm and how LinkedIn sees it as important and all those other things. Um, so that, that's from a content perspective. From a networking or, or sales perspective, uh, the, the person who's responsible for business development doesn't have the deep relationships that Cheryl has. Cheryl is the one that's really building the relationships, right? Because she's the one that's working closely with the, with the family, with the business owners. So they together need to mine Cheryl's connections and her connections connections. Cheryl is now connected to all these CEOs and you know, the VPs that she's been working with inside of these family owned businesses, they have networks to mine, but Cheryl's not a salesperson. So she doesn't necessarily want to do sales all day long, but if she sits with the business developer and the business developer says, hey, CEO Jane Smith knows 15 people, because we're working through this together, that I want to meet. Next time you're with Jane, can you run through these names and see who she thinks we would we could do a good job with? And then if that's the case, get permission for me to reach out as the salesperson. Okay. So now that's the collaborative. So Cheryl has the list of the 15 people. She says, Jane, of these 15, who should we reach out to? These eight, excellent, thank you so much. What's the salesperson's name? Uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. So if it's okay with you, Liz Cheyenne's going to be, hi, Cheyenne. If it's okay with you, Cheyenne's going to be reaching out to you in the next, Cheyenne needs a new picture. Um, she's going to be reaching fast, by the way. So wait, so she loved that picture. And nope. She... Bad, bad picture. Sorry, Cheyenne. You're beautiful. Great for Facebook. Not a link, not good for LinkedIn. Okay. Um, so just, just saying. Um, what do you think about consistency of headlines when you have a, or banners when you have a company like uh, that? I like, I like branded. I like graph, like I like a feel, same feel. Um, headlines can be a little bit different. I mean, there's a whole lot of different. Would everybody have the same company description? No, or... that's your story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's your story. No, you know, it, it, we there's definitely templates that you can use, but I would never have it all the same. Your personality has to shine, but it has to be your professional personality, right? It's 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 how how would you show up at, at a networking event? Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. So, but it, you know, I I would absolutely. So even her about as a certified high performance coach, you haven't earned the right for them to care about that yet. Right, so, so what we want to do is, who, who is she selling to? So they're selling to family owned businesses. So uh, maybe it's one of the challenges business owners or family owned businesses face is leadership challenges because they have to manage the people that they have Thanksgiving dinner with, mm, right? right? Like that's where I'd start because that's the resonate piece. We have to resonate. Good. Okay. So we're, we're getting this like We go out into the world and we connect with people. How do you manage your time and how do you suggest people manage their time? So they're not on like LinkedIn, like, or maybe they should be on LinkedIn all the time, depending on their role in the company. It depends right? on the role. Sure. So um, we actually have uh, a um, ebook that's free to download, which is a day in the life of a social seller that goes through every potential activity pretty much right of what to do and broken up in times. But here's the thing, I, I'm gonna start with my quick little story. When I worked at Dun & Bradstreet, I started in 1990. When I started, it was pre-email. Really, we didn't, I, I had never heard of email in 1990, I don't think. And then we got something that was called CC mail. So it was only internal email first. Mm. And I think it was 1992-ish. And, and I was, that's, it was the same time that I became a full-time sales in the field person. And I remember going to my boss on the edge of tears, say, Mary Ellen, Mary Ann, saying, I don't know how you guys expect me to manage this. I have 
way too much to do in my day to be able to handle all of this CC mail. This is in the way of my business. Mm -hmm. If you want me to sell, how do you expect me? Like, like and I don't think I was that rude because I was young. Yeah. But it was like, I don't know how to time manage this. Now imagine doing any business at all without email today. I, I could not run my business without it. But the, 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 the bringing it new into my, trying to adapt, like how often should I look at email? You want me to look at that five times a day? Are you crazy? I look at it 40 times a day, right? It, it's, it became a center of my business development and running my business. That's where social is, is moving. But people are in the place like, how do you expect me to add this to my crazy day already? Here's the thing, just like email, sure, it took up more time, but it reduced so much other time in the back end that it made up for it, right? So a lot less phone calls, a lot less physical mail. I had faster time to contracts because I could, once I got real email and it was going out the door, I did not have to walk up four flights to, you know, to, to an underwriter of something, not at Dunbar Street, somewhere else, but whatever. I didn't have to walk up four flights to get something approved. I could email it and have it back in three minutes, right? And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it felt like so much more work initially, but it's saving me so much in the back end, mm -hmm. right? So all of a sudden email is essential. That's where social selling and LinkedIn really is starting to eke its way into, it, especially with the new remote economy. There isn't any better way to do business, right? There, there are no trade shows or conferences to go to. There, the, 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 this is it, right? So we have to start saying, how do we do this? So it feels like it's a longer process, a longer outreach, but it's a much shorter to outcome, right? So when we get it in place and we start leveraging it for client referrals, we start um, putting thought leadership out there and, and, and maybe it feels like a lot of work here, but we've got this inbound stuff that's now happening. Mm, right. And that builds over time and it's really, it, it feels like it's taking forever. And then sometimes you look back at what you've put together and you're like, wow, that really has added up over time. Right. Yeah. What, so uh, two, two things you had said earlier, well, I tried it and it didn't really work. If you are trying it as random acts of social, you can't measure what's working and what's not working or what's leading you to success. If you're really doing this unique KPIs, what am I measuring? Uh, you need, here's my checklist of the seven things I'm going to do every day. Here's the checklist of the three things I'm going to do every week. Here's the checklist of the two things I'm going to do every single month. Just like any sales plan or any business plan, you need a social selling plan. And then you can measure, you can A-B test, you can see what's working and eventually get to a place where you're just, and maybe it takes three months, maybe it takes five months, but once you're in a groove and you know exactly what to do, it's, it's like working out. This is a great example, right? You join a gym, you show up, you, you, you kill yourself for a week, and then you're like, I'm not in any better shape. In fact, I'm sore than I was a week ago. And right. you know, my knees hurt and my muscles ache. And, and so I, this was supposed to make me healthier and I feel worse. But if you keep at it, in six months, you're down 10 pounds, you, whatever, right? You, your, your blood pressure. You need a strategy, you need a strategy, you, you need a plan, you need to block out the time not just doing it randomly, probably better to have blocks of time where you're engaged in LinkedIn rather than randomly pulling out your phone in the grocery checkout. Well, so I do both. <laughs> I definitely have some blocks of time, but I will say part of my, I get on a call with a prospect. I do my pre-call planning. I engage on their content, right? So there are like 30 second to 90 second stints based on activity in your calendar. 
So it's not just a block of got time. Got it, got it, got but it. But it's a trigger, right? So got it. I'm going to get on the phone with someone. I'm looking them up on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at their company page. I'm seeing if there are any initiatives that they're working on. So um, just a few minutes left and I, what, what I, you know, what you've done is you've provided actionable things that people can implement. So thanks for that. And actions, yes. how to reach out, how to, how to comment on content, so on and so forth. And, and so I, I think people should hire you. Uh, I think it's yes. good to hire. I, mean, I think people should hire you too. Well, yeah, I, I believe in coaching. I've got a strength coach and I, they make my life better. And I have a therapist dude. And when I go to him proactively, he makes my life better and coaches everything makes my life better. So, so people could, uh, the, the link to this, I think it changed the link in the URL, but it's, is it link? What is it? LinkedIn? It's LinkedInlibrary.com. LinkedInlibrary.com. And, and so how do you, people could come here, sign up for free. And I told you I did this yesterday and I was like, Oh, look, I'll bring stuff. A whole bunch of this is here and I can just get it and checklist. So if people sign up, they get that for free and start to. There's so much content and almost weekly we've, well, almost daily now we've got new stuff going in. Um, yeah. And there's member only webinars. Yep. I don't know if I'll get there quickly, uh, but um, oh. yeah, so that's. So did it that's, not remember it right? Somewhere here. I am a member. I just, it's messed up with all my other, you know. I'm a last pass person too, but sometimes last pass is harder. Well, anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to spend time on that, but the, the bottom line is if you hit sign in, it's not signing in. It's no. not just because I, it's loading the wrong password somewhere. Got it. Way. I mean, but I can people, get to it. People can come get the free content and then you offer. Oh yeah. From social sales link.com too. You can, if you just go to social sales link.com, there's a sign in at the top, right? Got it. And tell us about your paid offerings and how, cause. I oh, think thanks. Yeah, so we run, um, our next one starts in two hours, two and a half hour, three o'clock, but um, we run monthly training. Uh, and then we have what I think everyone, like you believe in coaching, this is group coaching, office hours, $29 a month. There are 16 that you can hop on in a month. You get lots of on-demand content, which is being updated as you we speak, we have, cause the new LinkedIn looks different. Everything's changed. Um, tons of stuff, $29 a month gets you so much. It's ridiculous. So even if you don't want to go through the full on training, you can go through the on-demand. If you are a self-studier over eight hours of on-demand training, of, you know, little quick tips. How do you put your headline together? How do you put your summary together? There's a workbook that comes with it. $29 a month. It's ridiculous. But we want to serve the masses. And this was a little like pandemic pivot thing, right? Like how do we get, and so you join for free, you can join for free forever. And there's lots of stuff. If you want the group coaching, um, $29 a month. I think more of my people are probably interested, like engaging on the free level and then like hiring you and your, and or your team for real, you know, to make a, to, to do more like done for you faster. And that, is that, something you so we need. don't actually do any done for you we we teach people how to fish got it so it's either private so there's this four week live public course everything yeah or private classes which is my primary business right so this is the little pivot but my primary business is we work with sales teams and we do custom training tailored training to them workshops um and really get teams uh to leverage uh, LinkedIn and, and even work with teams to collaborate. How are we getting marketing and sales to work better together? How are we, you know, how, how do we get marketing to um, interview the salespeople to create content that really works on LinkedIn? Like mm -hmm. we do a lot of the guiding. We yep. don't do, we only do the doing for us. We don't do it for other people, but I have great people in my network that do the work, including content that I But in the private classes, you're able to give more direct feedback. And oh yeah. Right. It's so engaging. Got it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I, I mean, it, it's, 
as, as personalized and tailored as you can get. Great. Well, Bryn, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the, the primary thing that stands out is just to remember this is about getting conversations with people, mm -hmm. talking to people, learning about them. And uh, so thanks. Is there anything uh, as we close that you want to, like, last comment? Oh, all I can say is I think you're awesome. And I appreciate you doing this. And I hope it helps your community. I'm confident it will. So thanks for taking the time, Bren. Thank you. Okay. Take care.